the towering authority of Darth Vader, the omnipotent and omnipresent Darth Sidious, and the unnerving and truly deadly Darth Maul are all emblematic of the Sith's enduring influence in the Star Wars galaxy, collectively showcasing the complex nature and seductive power of the dark side. However, there's one who stands above the rest in power and deceit, a being so masterful in his ability to fool and mislead that even the fans underestimate his true power. This Sith holds only one name, Darth Jar Jar. But before we begin, I'd like to thank the Chill Cactus for suggesting this video topic idea. Your name will be entered into the Dooku Saber giveaway draw. Be sure to comment your lore questions, what ifs, etc. for a chance to have your idea made into a video and to be entered into the giveaway draw. Anyway, on with the video. It's been more than nine years since the intriguing theory of Binks potentially being a Sith surfaced. Thus, a thorough re-evaluation of this idea is long overdue, especially considering the Clone Wars and recent comic books have often been overlooked. But first, let us re-establish the evidence from the prequels that support this captivating hypothesis. Jar Jar Binks, a character introduced in The Phantom Menace, has widely been criticised for his clumsy and bumbling persona. However, a closer examination of his survival skills in conflict situations reveals a level of competence that starkly contrasts with his seeming inept behaviour. Indeed, in the heat of battle, Jar Jar displays an uncanny ability to survive and even thrive, which at first appears to be the result of sheer luck. During the Battle of Naboo, he is seen stumbling into enemy lines, inadvertently causing destruction and chaos among the Trade Federation's droids. Jar Jar's handling of the Gungan energy balls or boomers during the battle also shows him inadvertently causing damage to the droid army. His seemingly random tosses results in the destruction of multiple battle droids and tanks. His interactions which lead to the droid tank's destruction at first appears to be a series of fortunate accidents. However, the efficiency with which these accidents occur hint at a possible force intuition guiding his actions, allowing him to be effective in combat despite his overt clumsiness, contributing significantly to the Gungan army's success. This level of effectiveness in the frenzy of the battlefield aligns more with the calculated manoeuvres of a trained operative than with the fortuitous accidents of a fool. Indeed, analysing Jar Jar during the battle reveals similarities to the ancient Chinese combat style of Zhao Guan, most commonly referred to as drunken boxing and drunken fist. Fitting its name, this style of martial arts is characterised by its imitations of movements befitting those of the intoxicated. This kung fu style is renowned for incorporating a range of advanced combat techniques such as hitting, grappling, locking, dodging, fainting, ground and aerial fighting, as well as other sophisticated methods. Strikes and grabs are seamlessly combined, with hands alternately striking on extension and grabbing on retraction. Power for grabs is generated through techniques such as dropping the body, lifting the feet slightly off the ground and stomping down with the weight of the entire body, or by falling on a prone position. These methods are seen throughout Binks' role in the Battle of Naboo. Moreover, deception is a key focus of Zhu Guan, with continuous bobbing and weaving, feigned instability, attacks from unusual angles, sudden changes of momentum and the use of blind spots and visual distractions. This style also involves changing game plans mid-flight and utilising concealed or improvised weapons, perhaps a relevant point to Jar Jar's use of the boomer energy balls. Vitally, these moments of survival and supposed accidental heroism are too consistent and impactful to be merely coincidental. Proponents suggest that Jar Jar is using a sophisticated form of deception, a common tactic among the Sith to conceal his true capabilities. This deception extends to his physical agility. Indeed, Jar Jar demonstrates remarkable acrobatic skills, including high jumps and swift movements. This was seen early on in The Phantom Menace, when Jar Jar encounters Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Swamp of Naboo. Despite his apparent clumsiness, he is able to leap incredible distances, a manoeuvre reminiscent of force-enhanced jumps commonly used by the Jedi, 
This ability was further demonstrated in the bridge scene, when Qui-Gon, Kenobi and Darth Jar Jar intervene to save Queen Padme. Critical to the Darth Jar Jar theory is Binks' takeoff and landing from the bridge. Closer examination shows him falling from one side, with the droid on the ground shooting at the spot on the bridge where he last saw him. However, somehow Jar Jar lands in a completely different position to his trajectory. This gravity-defying event once again suggests an underlying proficiency and control that could only be attributed to hidden force sensitivity. Beyond the physical clues, Jar Jar's political impact on the Republic is ubiquitous. To begin with, when revisiting the Battle of Naboo, it's noteworthy that while Jar Jar isn't directly engaged in the space battle, his actions on the ground have an indirect impact on the larger conflict. By contributing to the chaos that helped the Gungan forces hold off the Trade Federation army, he plays a part in allowing Anakin Skywalker to destroy the droid control ship. This theory could stretch to suggest that his involvement on the ground is part of a larger plan to bring Anakin, a strong force sensitive being, into a position where his abilities could be revealed and manipulated. Expanding on the theme of Jar Jar Binks' political manoeuvrings and their implications for the rise of the Galactic Empire, let's delve deeper into the more concrete examples that underscore the theory of his strategic involvement in key events during the prequels. Firstly, Jar Jar Binks' transition from an outcast in The Phantom Menace to a representative and senator in Attack of the Clones is remarkably rapid. Given the Gun Gun's initial portrayal was inept, his elevation to such position of influence suggests an unnatural proficiency in navigating the complex political landscapes of the Galactic Republic. This ascension is particularly curious given that Naboo already had capable leaders like Queen Amidala. His appointment could be seen as a strategic placement, aligning with Sith tactics of placing operatives in key political positions. Indeed, during a critical moment in the Galactic Senate, it is Jar Jar who proposes giving Supreme Chancellor Palpatine emergency powers to deal with the Separatist threat. This motion is arguably the most crucial step in Palpatine's plan, allowing him to legally form the Grand Army of the Republic and setting the stage for his eventual declaration as Emperor. Jar Jar's proposal, which he makes while serving as a stand-in for Senator Amidala, does not seem to align with his character's perceived naivety but rather suggests a calculated move to facilitate Palpatine's rise to absolute power. The significance of this act cannot be overstated. It's the legal foundation upon which the Galactic Empire was built. For a character portrayed as comic relief, this moment of political influence is incongruous, unless viewed through the lens of intentional manipulation, possibly hinting at Jar Jar's deeper understanding or involvement in the Sith Master Plan. Furthermore, the scene featuring Jar Jar in the Senate is often cited by proponents as showcasing what they believe to be the use of a Jedi mind trick. Perhaps he was using this mind trick on all of the Senators present, just as Exar Kun had done 4,000 years earlier. Crucially, these hand gestures are not an isolated incident. Jar Jar was promoted to General and Senator whilst using this sleight of hand. Jar Jar's continued presence around key political figures, as well as being at the center of pivotal events, suggests an underlying purpose within the Sith plan. As we know, the Sith are known for their long-term planning and manipulation of others to achieve their ends, and Jar Jar's political career fits neatly into this pattern of covert influence. Indeed, we must ask ourselves why on Coruscant would Palpatine have such an outwardly embarrassing, cringeworthy character in his immediate circle of influence. Reputation is critical to Palpatine's political standing in the Senate, and being the cunning Machiavellian, it is hard to reason why such a strategist would accept Jar Jar Binks unless he was of Sith power. Taking a closer look at his dialogue and behavior, some fans argue that Jar Jar's influence on characters such as Qui-Gon Jinn and Padme Amidala in The Phantom Menace serves as a strategic purpose. His seemingly random or nonsensical utterances and actions might actually reflect a deep understanding of individual psychology and the Force. For instance, Jar Jar's ability to persuade Qui-Gon to take him to the Galactic Senate, as well as convincing Padme to return to Naboo, could be seen as leveraging the Force or psychological techniques, rather than just simple luck or plot convenience. His effectiveness in these scenarios hints at the ability to manipulate outcomes in subtle ways, perhaps indicating mind tricks beneath his clownish exterior. Moreover, Jar Jar's overall demeanor and the timing of his antics often coincide with the moments crucial for the progression of the Sith agenda. 
by drawing attention to himself through slapstick humor or seemingly foolish mishaps. He diverts the focus of both characters and the audience from more sinister developments occurring in the narrative. This behavior could be interpreted as a deliberate tactic to obscure the true machinations of the Sith, allowing their plans to advance unchecked. For example, his antics during key discussions or events often led to outcomes that, while seemingly accidental, consistently benefited the Sith's long-term goals. Some theorists also argue that the manner in which Jar Jar is presented in various scenes, especially those pivotal to the storyline, may not be incidental but rather a subtle indicator of the deeper involvement in the saga's unfolding events. This perspective hinges on the observation that Jar Jar is often strategically positioned within certain key scenes, even if his presence is not directly acknowledged through the dialogue. Such visual cues could imply that George Lucas intended for Jar Jar to play a much more significant role, one that transcends his surface-level portrayal. This argument gains further traction when considering Lucas's storytelling style characterized by his fondness for misdirection and complex plot developments. Lucas has demonstrated a penchant for weaving intricate narratives that culminate in unforeseen revelations, a technique epitomized by the dramatic twist of Darth Vader's true identity in the original trilogy. The suggestion then is that Lucas may have initially envisioned a similarly surprising trajectory for Jar Jar Bings. Further supporting this aspect of the theory is the similarities of Jar Jar's narrative arc and that of Palpatine. Both characters experience a meteoric rise from positions of seemingly insignificance to the pinnacle of power within the Galactic Senate. Palpatine's journey from a senator to emperor, masterfully concealing his identity as Darth Sidious, mirrors the speculated trajectory of Jar Jar, suggesting a possible intentional parallel by Lucas. This mirroring not only reinforces the theory of Jar Jar's hidden significance, but also suggests a deeper narrative symmetry, where both characters in their respective roles embody the theme of concealed power. Such a revelation would align with Lucas's writing style, thus meaning Jar Jar's role as a jester could have been a temporary distraction. Interestingly, Jar Jar and Yoda also share intriguing similarities in their characterizations, drawing parallels to mythological storytelling elements. Both characters can be seen as unconventional, strange creatures dwelling in the wilderness, embodying an unexpected source of wisdom and power. In mythology and storytelling, strange and seemingly harmless characters often serve as unexpected mentors or guides to the protagonist. Yoda, residing in the swamps of Dagobah, initially appears stupid and non-threatening. Similarly, Jar Jar Binks comes across as clumsy and goofy. These traits contribute to their perceived harmlessness, making them stand out in contrast to more conventional and overtly powerful characters. Furthermore, the notion that Jar Jar could have revealed himself as a Sith to complement the good side of the Force aligns with the theme of duality, often present in mythological storytelling. The idea that a seemingly harmless character could harbour a darker, hidden aspect adds depth to this narrative. This concept is reminiscent of the mentor figure who possesses both light and dark qualities, emphasising the complexity of the Force and the choices individuals make. In this context, the theory suggests that Jar Jar Binks, much like Yoda, could have been a character with the potential for significant influence on the Force. While Yoda embraces the light side, in this speculative scenario, would represent the balance of the Force by revealing himself as a Sith. Turning our attention to the more contemporary installments of Jar Jar in the Clone Wars, he showcases the same Sith capabilities and tendencies. Indeed, amidst the Separatist invasion of Ryloth, Representative Binks plays a pivotal role in a delicate mission. Alongside Bail Organa, Binks embarks on a journey to the planet Toydaria. Their goal was to persuade the king to allow the use of Toydaria as a supply staging base for Republic forces, aiming to aid besieged Ryloth. However, their diplomatic efforts faced challenges upon their arrival. These negotiations with the king took an unexpected turn due to the intervention of the Trade Federation. Leveraging the planet's strict policy of neutrality, convincing the king to deny the Republic's request for access to Toydarian facilities. 
but despite his public refusal, the king privately expressed sympathy for the Twi'leks of Ryloth, affected deeply by their plight. In a strategic move, the king discreetly agreed to assist Senator Organa. He promised to load Organa's ship with necessary provisions, under the condition that Toydera's involvement remained hidden to maintain its neutral stance. During a banquet organized to distract the Trade Federation Senator Dodd from the covert operation, Binks showcased his unique talents. With his usual clumsiness camouflaged as entertainment, Binks balanced plates and seemingly defied gravity, creating a spectacle that only a force sensitive could execute. This distraction allowed Organa to successfully load his ship with supplies for Ryloth. Following these events, the king announced his intention to reconsider Toydaria's policy of neutrality, indicating a significant political shift which would benefit the Republic military and therefore the future Sith-controlled empire. This mission's success was only possible because of Binx's unorthodox methods. His combat prowess in The Phantom Menace was also continued in the episode Bombard Jedi, where he plays a crucial role in a rescue mission. Disguised in a Jedi robe, Jar Jar and C-3PO embark on a daring attempt to save Senator Padme after her capture on Voidia by Senator Onakanda Far, who had aligned with the Separatists for resources to aid his people. Easily mistaken for a Force-sensitive Jedi, Jar Jar's inadvertent heroics and runnings with danger, including evading capture and surviving encounters with marine monsters, led to a series of events that undermined the Separatist plans. His actions, characterized by his usual blend of awkwardness and accidental ingenuity, culminate in a dramatic rescue. And finally, as Jar Jar bursts into the scene, he creates chaos, allowing Padme to capture Newt Gunray, the leader of the Trade Federation. Senator Farr, witnessing Jar Jar's bravery, goes on to thank him as a Jedi, expressing his gratitude to Master Bombard. It's the Jedi! It's the Je 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 it's Jedi. Blast that Jedi! Sir, over there! The Jedi is escaping! Jedi? Where's the Jedi? I do believe they mean you! Kill the Jedi! Another key moment masterminded by Darth Binks was seen in the Shadow Warrior episode. In this episode, Jar Jar takes on a crucial role that leads to the capture of another one of the Separatist leaders, in this case, General Grievous, the leader of the droid army. The episode unfolds as Jar Jar successfully impersonates the leader of the Gungans, exploiting his uncanny resemblance to the Gungan leader. This deception is part of the larger plan to trap Grievous, leveraging the Gungans' home terrain and unconventional warfare tactics. The plan involved luring Grievous into a full sense of security, making him believe he is about to quash a Gungan uprising, only to find himself ensnared in a meticulously laid trap. The Gungans, under the leadership of Jar Jar, display remarkable bravery and ingenuity, setting the stage for the capture of the Septus General. The moment Grievous realizes he has been outsmarted and captured, supposedly not by a seasoned Jedi, but by a very unlikely hero, adds a layer of humiliation, irony and speculation to his defeat at the hands of Darth Binks. In another moment in the shadowy depths of the Clone Wars, Jar Jar Binks reveals his cunning through a mission on Falorum, that could only be described as a masterpiece of deception and strategy, once again hinting at his secret Sith powers. The mission, seemingly a straightforward ransom delivery to secure Count Dooku, unfolds under Jar Jar's hidden guidance. With the Republic Task Force led by Senator Chorus and Jar Jar Binks crash landing on Florum, the stage is set for a dramatic unveiling of Jar Jar's latent abilities. The death of Senator Karras thrusts Jar Jar into a leadership role, a move that at first glance seems like a desperate fallback. However, it's precisely this unforeseen accident that propels Jar Jar to the forefront, where his true capabilities can shine. As the story unfolds, Jar Jar's supposed ineptitude masks a series of calculated moves that would make even the most seasoned Sith Lord take notice. His accidental commandeering of a pirate tank, leading to the destruction of two more, isn't mere luck, but a deliberate act of sabotage. This chaos, which also disables the power to the pirate camp, isn't the result of haplessness, but a stroke of genius, allowing the Jedi to escape and turn the tide against the pirates. Jar Jar's actions on Florum, when viewed through the lens of his secret Sith powers, transform him from a bumbling sidekick into a puppet master, 
pulling the strings of fate. Furthermore, a canon comic strip now narrates a pivotal scenario where Jar Jar could no longer conceal his abilities. In a critical moment demanding action, the truth about Jar Jar has emerged. His ability to remain unnoticed vanished when faced with a dire situation. Specifically, when a comrade's life hung in balance, Jar Jar did not just take a Jedi's weapon post-mortem, but displayed an adeptness in lightsaber combat that stunned even the clone troopers. Jar Jar's mastery over the lightsaber deceived many, sparking curiosity about how he acquired such precise combat skills beginning in the Battle of Mimban. Here, Rex defended a position under Jedi General Lon Teak, with Senator Jar Jar Binks unexpectedly caught in the turmoil. Amidst a conversation between Hardcase and Rex, the Jedi was fatally shot, dropping his lightsaber. With the Jedi fallen, leadership inadvertently passed to Jar Jar, who was distracted by the loss. Rex, who prioritized survival, commanded a retreat, planning to later target an enemy generator. Despite intending a collective departure, this plan saw Rex venture alone at night. Hours later, Rex, outnumbered and on the brink of defeat, anticipated his end. Yet, a surprising intervention by a blue lightsaber, wielded not by a Jedi, but by Jar Jar, annihilated the droid assailants. This incident reignited Sith theories as Jar Jar clumsily dropped the lightsaber, reverting to his bumbling persona, claiming his action was to prevent the weapon from being captured by enemies. Despite his sudden ineptitude with the lightsaber, Jar Jar professed his intention to rescue Rex critiquing his solitary mission and suggesting a partnership as the Clone Wars continued. The comic leaves us with a glimpse into a side of Jar Jar Binks long suspected by fans, further fueling discussions on his true capabilities and intentions. Together, the combination of all these elements offers a compelling argument of what might have been. While direct evidence of a planned Sith storyline for Jar Jar remains largely elusive, this fun theory no doubt enriches Star Wars lore further complementing the complex process of storytelling in a galaxy far, far away. Let us know what you think about the theory down below in the comments. And as always, may the Force be with you.